The Edge to Circumference tool is found under the Position Angle tool category. It is an edge position tool that locates an edge in a circular direction, like the position of a needle on an instrument panel or a notch on a gear. The generic tool name for this under the function list is Edge Position, and you would use a ring or art type inspection region. We will add this tool from the Position Angle category. The first step in the setup of any tool will be to store the reference image, if you haven't done so already. In this example, we've already stored the reference image, and we've already set up some position correction to move our tool if the part moves. When you're using the Edge to Circumference tool, your only choices for inspection region are ring or arc. And this is the region in which you want to scan and locate the edges. In this example, we're going to locate the angle of this notch on the gear. So I'll go ahead and move and adjust my ring so it will scan just for that notch. So what we'll do is we'll set this inner ring to the inner part of the part. About like that. And then we'll bring this inner ring in. So what's going to happen here is it will scan around the circle and locate that notch edge. Click OK when the region's set. Next, you would set up the necessary detection conditions for the edge. We can set clockwise or counterclockwise direction, and then we can also specify the edge direction if we want. Basically what will happen here is it will start scanning for edges at what's called the start angle, which is the line here in red. That can be found under the detail detection conditions, as you can see right here. You can change that as necessary, but we'll go ahead and leave it that alone. So what I'll do is I'll start here at the start angle and scan for edges in a clockwise manner. And the first edge that it locates, that is the one that it'll find. Now if we want to ensure it's always the same edge here, what we can do is we could set the edge direction to dark to light. So it'll always look for that first dark to light transition. So if for some reason our notch kind of fell across this start angle in between it, it'll still find that same edge. You can set up any of the other detection edge conditions as necessary according to the application. The last step then will be to set our upper and lower limits under the judgment conditions. And this is the pass-fail criteria for the tool. The measured value is displayed and can be used to set your limits. In this example, since we're doing an edge to circumference tool, it's actually reporting back the edge position as an angle, with zero degrees being at three o'clock. So that's where the angle starts. And uh, as you can see here, it scanned and found the edge here, so we're at about 80 degrees as our angle. Now, if this is our good part, we can go ahead and uh, make that our good tolerance, so we'll set an upper limit accordingly. So let's say if the notch gets too far from this range, we want it to fail. So for the upper limit, we'll go ahead and put maybe a limit of 85 degrees, and maybe a lower limit of perhaps... 75 degrees. Again, you set this according to, at, to the application. So let's say we just want the good notch to be within this 10 degree range. We can set the limits accordingly. While you're setting your limits, you can use the measured value off the reference image, or you can run some parts and confirm the measured value from your triggered images to confirm the operation. Click OK when all these settings are complete and you can now run your tool. As you can see here, as the tool is running, if the measured angle falls outside our upper and lower range, the tool will turn red. And if it was within our range, it turns green and passes. So if it's outside our range, it will fail, and you can send the fail signal out to the PLC or other device. The Edge to Circumference tool, or Edge Position tool, can also be used to count the number of edges in a circular manner like this. So I've already added another Edge to Circumference tool, as you can see here, and I've already set up a ring around the outer portion here. Let's say we want to count the number of gear teeth in this same application. So here's the basic setup. As a default uh, with the Edge to Circumference tool, the count is set to 1, and this can be found under the Detailed Detection Conditions. See max edge count. So as a default, it's set for one, but you can actually raise this number to whatever's necessary for the application. So in this example, I'll go ahead and set it to 30, so it can count up to 30 edges. So we'll go ahead and click OK. So now we're counting both sides of the gear 
on each setting because we're because the edge direction is set for both. So if we only want to count each gear once, we can specify the direction, light to dark. So as you can see in this example now, we're only counting the light to dark transition, so we're counting the number of teeth, which is if you click on the detailed judgment conditions, you can find that under the edge count here, and 10. So we can also set a limit for the number of teeth as well if we want to. So if we want to make sure there's 10 gear teeth and make sure none are missing, we can set our upper and lower of 10 and count the number of gear teeth. So, so in summary, the edge to circumference tool can be used to find the location of an edge in an a, a circular manner and uh, pass-fail based off that. And it can also be used to count the number of edges in a circular manner.